guys, it's me, Delta One, here with God's Airsofters, and I'm trying a little thing different for my review today, but today's review is of the CYMA Dragonoff SVD, it's also known as the CM57 with the numbers and letters following it, as always. I apologize for the AC, or if you hear cars come by, or wind, or if you see a part of my garage, but I wanted to try something different. So, this is what your average Soviet era sniper would have. He would have this as a KLMK, which is a uh, eight bit Nintendo camo to the people who have no idea what this is. And this is normally what you would get if you were a sniper. Or you would, I don't know if they'd have ghillie suits or anything like that. Uh, my demonstrator here, Mikey, I want to give a big thanks for him to helping me out. So, anyways, let's move on to the review. So, as a review, I'll list what it comes with. It comes with an 8.4 stick type battery, 1200 milliamp, comes with a crappy triple charger, don't ever use them, and some really crappy BBs, uh, manual, and you will get a 200 round high cap, which is quite annoying, which is where his hand is. Now, there is a reason why his hand is there, and I will get to that further on. Now, again, the gun is steel. It is a steel construction, I will also have a table review if you do not like this. So, um, as you can see, he is the sniper. Now, normally there would be a scope right here, but unfortunately the one I have is on another gun and it's zeroed in and I don't want to move it. Otherwise I would have put it on here. So let's move on to the features. You have the stock, which has the cheek pad, which is where his cheek is resting right now. It is removable and will work on AKS 74s and 74Us as the Call of Duty term is, which is, I'm just gonna call it that because that's what most people know it as. Now as the sniper, they have followed this very well. Where his hand is, the reason his hand is here, guys, is because if you were to put your hand here, which is if he was to put his hand here, and he was to make a shot 800 yards away, his bullet would have a different trajectory as if it was where the mag was, because it puts minuscule pressure on the barrel causing differential in an actual bullet travel. Now this is an airsoft gun so that won't ever happen because unless you're Arnold Schwarzenegger 20 years ago you could just break off the front end. But he is not. Now moving on you have the selector switch which I'm going to ha ask him is there. It goes to semi-auto and safe. Now there's a little lever behind. If you were to disassemble this would remove the top cover, as seen here, as he is removing top cover, which would expose your bolt and hop-up unit, which the bolt is, I believe, is steel, which I will show in a magnet test, revealing the hop-up unit here. Now, as he disassembles the rifle, I mean, reassembles, my mistake, you will notice that there are a there is a sling mount right by his cheek. The sling mount is somewhat trustworthy, Although I would not use it, I would rig a uh, some other way of having a sling on there. Apologize for the wind if there isn't. Now moving up, you have the sights. The sights go all the way up to, as the sniper will tell me now, in actual realistic world. So this would be uh, normal 100 meters. 100 meters. 300 meters. 300 meters. How much does it go up to? 1,200 meters. Which it is possible for a real SVD to do that. Just not with iron sights. Now, I will explain how this is possible. Now, they did stay close enough to the real one to actually replicate this. You see there is a knob here. This knob is to disable gases traveling back to push the bolt back, which is very well good feature that they have gone this realistic with this rifle. Now, this would make it to where you manually have to pull the bolt back as so there to extract the bullet and chamber another one, which would increase accuracy because there's less moving parts when fired. Now, moving along, you have the hand guards right here, which are polymer, so there is wood ones out there. They're a little bit harder to get in the United States, so if you live in China, UK, you're probably gonna have a little bit easier way of getting hold of it than us, um, and for more affordable prices. So again, magazine release is just like any Dragon Off. Um, however, it is a real sword clone, so there are minor modifications that you need to do to get these mags to work in a real sword. It's mainly with the lift on the front of the magazine. Now, moving forward, you have the sling mount here, which is completely trustworthy, as shown. Now, you do have a bayonet lug, which God knows why you would ever have a bayonet on this thing. Um, 
you can. And the real bayonets, the real AK-47 bayonets, do fit on here. So, front sight. If you were to use iron sights, this has an adjustable front sight, which is good. Flash rider, it's riveted on. Not necessarily riveted, it's uh, tapped on. Um, what, what this means is that there's like kind of like a half circle cut into the top and they shove two pins through it so it doesn't wobble anywhere and I can see they have some epoxy in there which is going to make people really angry because uh, Chinese epoxy doesn't ever want to come off. So moving on, flash rider, this little plastic part is removable. Guys, keep in mind, I don't recommend taking any of these things off. So now moving on to other features, the battery compartment which is shown here which is where his hand would be if you played Call of Duty. Um, battery, go or Chris Costa for that matter. Um, the 8.4 will fit in here. You can get mini 7.4 stick types and 1100, 15, 1100, I mean 11.1, 1500 milliamp batteries will fit in here. Um, I wouldn't go any venture bigger than that, and this gun is not light already. So that fact of the matter. Um, as the sniper itself, Mikey is the sniper on my squad. Um, I'm going to let him tell you what he personally thinks of this rifle. So basically what I think is it's an extremely good replica of the SBD. See why I made it a fantastic job with it. It's um, one of the things I really like is the fact that it is an AEG. It's not a Springer. And that's just plain old good because you can have those follow-up targets if you need to. And you don't have to, you know, all the time. So the other thing is uh, I love the black polymer and it's really nice polymer too like uh, when I saw it I was thinking oh cheap plastic like ABS plastic polymer no I mean this is like polymer you know it's good it's magpul quality it's, no, I wouldn't say magpul quality but it's it's gonna be durable like you're not gonna have any problems with it cracking unless you're freaking you know you know being ridiculous, being ridiculous with it like using it as a handlebar to pull yourself up or something. But, you know, that's fantastic. And another thing about being black that's really good, as I said, being black, is um, you can paint it really well. I wouldn't recommend painting a Dragonoff because you want to maintain its Dragonoff beauty. But if you felt the need to paint it, you could, and it would work really well. Because uh, when paint chips, it, as all paint does, if you have wood coloring underneath it, it's just bright and obnoxious looking, so you have to paint over it. Black, when you have a painted black polymer stocks and things, um, if it chips, it doesn't look that bad. Um, let's see what else. How does it compare in terms of weight to the real sword? In terms of weight to the real sword, uh, this is much lighter. <laughs> I, That's an understatement. It's much lighter. The real sword, I had a chance to play a game with it, and I was lugging it around like this the entire day because it was so heavy. Um, and when you go up to shoulder the real sword, you know, it's just kind of hard to keep it on target because it is obnoxiously heavy. And the fact that the real swords have steel barrels. Yeah, the real sword does have a steel barrel. This is what, aluminum? Either aluminum or pot metal. It's either aluminum or pot metal, which is, it could be a con too because... If it is pot metal. Then with a long barrel like this, you really really need to be muzzle conscious because if you say you're in a place where there's a wall and you turn and you're not aware of your muzzle you can smack that into the wall and bend your barrel and that's not good so you just got to be muzzle conscious with that another good thing about the barrel is it's so long you can put a 650 in there no problem and if you know guys who can make custom barrels you can make longer barrels and that's no problem either um, I also really like the cheek pad. It's really comfortable. Yeah, I would say that is better than the real sword cheek pad. But it's yeah, it does fit on the 74 stocks. It could, the, yeah, and the AKS, the AKS stocks. So as a sniper, would this meet your bill of requirements um, as a base? As a base gun, if you were planning to buy this and upgrade it, most definitely. If you're planning to buy this and just use it as a fun gun or try to use it as a sniper, it's not ready for it yet. So unless you're planning on putting some money into your gun, um, I would not recommend this. But if you're planning on putting some money into it, you know a guy that can do it or you can do it yourself, by all means, go ahead and get it. It's fantastic. Um, it's got the AK side rail mount, perfect for mounting any sort of AK optics. Roman we recommend a Romanian PSL optic. 
That would be preferable. The, the airsoft cheaper. ones are just. Don't ever buy the airsoft ones. I don't know about the real sword one. The real sword one is probably good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So no it, it's a good sniper rifle it's, for things. It's a fantastic sniper rifle for the money. It's fantastic for a base upgrade. Just not fantastic for buying and using out of the box. So. All right, Mikey, well, we appreciate your opinion. Now let's move on to the final conclusion. So, final conclusion, you're getting a proper AGSVD, and this is the only thing you can really get right now that even comes close to the real sword. And it's really not fair to even compare anything to the real sword. It just isn't, because it's a real sword. And if you've owned one, you will understand where I'm coming from. There's just completely different make, the, how, it, how it feels by the way you pick it up. It, you just can't compare it, but this is the only thing I can really say that will even come close. And that's that's what it is. It is a great base internally. It's the complete same as an SVD. Again, I'm going to do a tabletop review because there's always going to be people who don't like what I'm trying to do here. And I mean, as my sniper on my team, he even said this is a great base gun. Now, keep in mind, almost every sniper ever released on the airsoft market is a base, even. You know, JG Part 10, which is probably hands down one of the best all-time snipers you can buy for an airsoft gun. Um, you have to put a dump, uh, you have to dump some money to it. I apologize for the wind. Um, but other than that, this rifle has been done proper. It is, I personally think this is the best gun CYMA has ever come out with to this date. In terms of quality, in terms of the way that it is, internally CYMAs are just like tanks. Um, so, I would say it's worth it. Link in description to Airsoft Station, guys. Facebook, you can add me there. I'm there to help. I'm a, be more than willing to add me. Forum, my other channels, all that good stuff. And buy it at airsoftstation.com. Thanks for, to them for letting me review this. And guys, this gun is great. I really, really like it. So, guys, life is good. And I'll see you in the next video.